Hi, so today what we're going to demonstrate is taking an access database and integrating it into SQL Server by using the import export wizard that comes with Management Studio. So I have Management Studio up and you can see that on the left hand side I've highlighted the folder that says Management and I'm going to just go ahead and right click that folder and say Import Data. This brings up the Import Export Wizard of SQL Server and I'm going to click Next. The first screen that comes up says Choose a Data Source. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take an Access Database and we're going to turn it into a SQL Server database. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose Access right here, Microsoft Access as the data source, meaning the type of database that we're going to take and bring into SQL Server. Then I'm going to browse for my access database and as it happens I have this in Canvas and I also have it on the network uh, under Instructors, KPost, Student Read, SQL Server, Code Samples. There's a little access database called Star V2000. Very simple access database. I'm going to open that up and I don't have a username or password so I'm just going to say next. Now this is the destination. Where do we want this, this access database to go in SQL Server when it's been converted? And I'm just going to leave it native SQL client because that's where we want it to go is to a SQL Server database. I'm going to use Windows Authentication and down here on the database instead of saying default I'm going to create a new database. So I'm going to click New and I'm going to call this star Oops, star. Uh, let's see, new March 2nd. And I'm just going to leave all the defaults and say OK. So that's going to be the name of my new SQL Server database that will have all the tables and data from my Access database. And so I'm going to click Next. And I'm going to t just leave it the default and tell it to copy data from the tables of the existing database right into the SQL Server database and click Next. Then you can see that I have all these tables. I have five tables and one query. So I'm just going to choose each table and then I'm going to go back and click on Customer and see where it says Edit Mappings. This is your opportunity then to change any of the characteristics of the fields of this Access Database when it goes into the SQL Server database. Now the fields are, are the field names are fine. The data types are a little bit different in SQL Server than they are in Access and what SQL Server tries to do is create the best data, the best match between data types in Access in SQL Server. So anything that is a string or a character field in Access is probably going to be a varchar field in SQL Server. The N here indicates Unicode which means that SQL Server will use two bytes of storage to store every character instead of one. I'm going to just click off on the nullable box here on customer number because I know that's the primary key. That's the other thing that Access and SQL Server uh, have that are not in common is how they create those relationships and you notice that the uh, import export wizard does not preserve any keys here, foreign keys or primary keys. So you're going to have to go in there and add those yourself with alter table statements once this is created. So you can also click on the little edit SQL button and you can add your own SQL if you want to. You can go right in here and add the primary keys in the create table statement if you wish. I'm not going to do that or change the data types. I'm just going to do it here through the, the GUI. So name, um, address, city, state, zip, salesperson number are all their cares. I'm just going to leave those alone and I'm going to say OK. I'm going to go to the next table, product, edit mappings, and I'm going to change the item number here to a, a non-nullable field. The rest of these when I look down I have a price field and it's a real number. Real number would probably not be the best for, for a money type field so I'm going to make that a small money. The same with cost. 
I'm going to change that to small money. And then the quantity fields, minimum, maximum, and quantity on hand fields, I'm just going to leave uh, the same here as integers. So I'm going to move next and do the same thing with sales. So I'm going to click off on sales order number. I'm going to uh, then look at my data types, change this to small money. I'm going to make this date time a small date time and make this a small money and then click OK. Sales order. This is the key field and I'm going to also, this is this will have a composite key so I'm going to click off of those two and these should be OK because they, oops, quantity field should be an integer so I'm going to make that where are you here? Int. Okay, so quantity, item number, line item, those should all be OK. I'm going to say OK. Salesperson. I'm going to click off on the key field here. And down here, I believe there's a commission field that really should be small money. And I think the rest are OK. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to click Next. If you click the Preview button on a table, you can actually see the data in the table. So you can see that this um, table actually has data um, and you can see exactly what it is. So I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to click Next. And this tells me that this is what is um, predicted to happen. It looks like I have some warnings here uh, on price cost because I changed the data types there. So let's just kind of throw caution to the wind here and say next and we're going to run this immediately rather than saving it as a, a SQL Server package um, and running it later. We're going to run it right now. So I'm going to say next and this gives me a summary of what's going to happen. You can read that if you want and I'm going to say finish and so we're going to see what happens. And as long as I have green, there's a little information here, it doesn't show me any errors, but as long as I have green, um, then it's good. It, it tells me that would transfer 13 rows, 7 rows, 6 rows, and so forth for each table. And I'm going to go ahead and close that. And then if I go ahead, I'm going to just refresh my databases here. And I'm going to go look at star new March 2nd tables and there are my tables. And if I right click and say edit top 200 rows, I can eventually see the data. There we go. You can see that the data has all been transferred. Now the next job for you would be to determine where the primary keys and foreign keys are and create those using alter table statements. But at this point you have a viable SQL Server database. If I create a database diagram and say yes and add all the tables in, you can see that they do not have, once those are added in, that they're just added in in kind of a linear fashion here. They don't have any primary or foreign keys and it's up to you to add those in and you know how to do that using alter table. Alright, thanks a lot.